were you playing sort of the theater sports that we know now, no, no, competitive teams then? Sports. No, so you're doing no, public no. improvisation. The, the early theater sports was a way to make the classes more interesting. Uh -huh. You'd have a hat game and you'd have a commentator on it. Sure. And that's basically theater. Then you're into theater sports. Mm -hmm. And then you do other games like that, and the audience would cheer, and they'd had, they cheer for their team. Yeah. But it was never like, like it happened in Canada. In Canada, you guys are crazy about sport. We are. What, so we, we, we. Yeah. What got you to Canada? Uh, you were you visited an expo, but what made you move here? Ah, well, then about two years, three years later, well, I discovered you spoke English here. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's. I'd worked in Germany a bit, which uh, mostly they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted, I was an outlaw basically, well, like an actor, actor of sort of outlaws. Yeah. Um, I wanted to start a family and have a regular job and money coming in. Yeah, Expo 67, 68. I came to the University of Victoria f to do a production of something or other, which they hated. Not the students, the faculty were so annoyed and, God, they were pissed off. But they didn't say anything till I left. <laughs> That's the very Canadian. Though. I know, but the art department loved it. And then they said, oh, I'd done a sort of kind of rock Christian thing. Uh, I took the Wakefield cycle and modelled it up. Mm -hmm. But I felt in, in the Wakefield cycle, they were at the limits of their technology. So let's be at the limits of ours and let's use slides and big puppets and stuff and, and rock music and so on. But then they had this whole meeting where they said theatre's not going in this direction. It was a big mistake to invite this guy. This is before Godspell and... Jesus Christ, superstar. You were ahead of the curve. <laughs> Way ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's all sorts of trouble and potatoes up the exhaust of professors' cars and things. This is 68, yeah. when it was sort of mildly revolutionary. Oh, God, I got invited to talk to revolting students at the university, one of the universe, Simon. Simon Fraser? Not the one on the island, the one up on the hill. Some famous architect built this sort of student cage with no windows. Oh, no, you couldn't open that. Yeah, oh. a place I wouldn't want to work in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've been revolting and discussing and arguing all day. Every time I said something, they'd say, we want to discuss that. And I'd say, no, we can do something else. <laughs> Get the, took about half an hour hmm. with my fighting them and saying, I'm not going to, we don't discuss. And they got more and more pissed off, and then they suddenly melted and got all nice, <laughs> and then we had a great time. When did you uh, uh, end up at the University of Calgary? Is that what got you permanently? Well, Canada? then Richard and some of the act, a lot of the actors left, the, the students, that was, you know, the, the department kind of terrible things that happened after I left because they said all this is basically shit, and the students loved it. Oh. So you had a split between the professors and the students. Mm -hmm. And the art department loved it. You know, It's just those guys, they were wedded to a, another form of theatre. And that they were, this had chance effects in it and so on. And yeah. We were getting religious conversions in the green room. I was pissed off by that. <laughs> it was being too effective. The nuns asked for the films afterwards. What? Yeah, we there were all sorts of films of Jesus among the seagulls and things. Ah. <laughs> and the nuns asked for the film. So, I mean, it was, oh, yeah, the terrible review in the local paper. But then somebody called Barber, the, the big critic in Vancouver, was inveigled to come to see it and wrote a rave notice about it, which kind of undermined all the professors. That would have pissed them off, too. Totally. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're professors and they know. Yeah. It was fun arriving at Calgary. I met a professor who said, what is that stuff kids use? We usually use plasticine, but they got something they can eat. Oh. And they model with it. And they can eat it. 
Yeah. I don't know. I said Play-Doh, but Play -Doh. you're not supposed to eat it. Well, I, I don't think. Well, that stuff. But kids will eat anything. Yeah. I, anyway, somebody said he based all of his work on Play-Doh. And so, I thought, I come to a place with geniuses, and I'm thinking, that's fantastic. Like, there's no beginning and there's no end. And mm -hmm. <laughs> shape it out. And f then I realized he's a Canadian saying Plato. Oh, Plato. And I realized I've just, just come to a stupid university. Oh, no. But I thought I found a genius. Ah. Uh, I mean, really making me think. Yeah. And then another guy told me he'd, <laughs> he'd written his thesis on comedy. So he knew what was funny. And I went to see this ghastly Shakespearean play. <laughs> and I'm sitting by him. And the audience laugh, and he doesn't. And then he laughs, ha, 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 all by himself. Because he knows what's funny. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I tell you. That was my first week at Calgary. Oh, no. I wow, this is very interesting. <laughs> it's an amusing place. Uh, but so the theater sports... Yeah as it is now, was born that, at the University of Calgary? <clears throat> did the more formal, because yes, you were saying that the it, Canadians... Yeah, that, that was, well, I left Calgary for, after a couple of years, I went to Denmark, uh, to the state school for, yeah, the acting teachers at the state school used to get paid twice as much as anybody else. Hmm. It's a good place to go to. And you're only allowed to teach for 12 hours. Amazing. Amazing. But you could go and teach in other places as well. That's why there's a reason for going to Denmark. And also they speak English and they're mm. nice people and they're basically happy and so on. And they had a really good political system that all the students wanted to change. Now, I couldn't stand the weather. God, the winter came, it just drizzled. and <laughs> yeah. it, it was like being in a dirty saucepan. I mean, oh, God. So then I couldn't get back to... Calgary. You realize I don't have a degree, so that caused a lot of disturbance. You're teaching in a university with no degree. That's right. Yeah, that's going to piss people that off. So you get hired off. to read plays when you're not a playwright. You get commissioned to write a play when you're not a playwright. Yes. Then you get hired at a university and I when you have, have a, no degree. That's right. Okay. So I had a two-year teaching emergency teacher training course, which they were very snooty about, mm -hmm. and I failed it. <laughs> I failed everything. But you somehow, it's the, but it's the 70s, so somehow no, you I, end up no, teaching I them. failed that course, and they told me they would pass me in English if I went back and took an English exam. Okay. And I said I'd never pass an exam in English in my life because I do bad writing and I can't spell. Mm -hmm. I couldn't spell in those. Computers taught me to spell. 